Yep. Hello, everyone. My name is Kais Youssef. I work on the Pixel kernel team for performance and power. And today, I will try to walk with you about the challenges that makes running mainline kernel not possible. And you see all these vendor hooks that people don't tend to like them, but they are one of the unnecessary evils uh, that I hope we can minimize. And that's the discussion I would like to do to basically get into, like how can we actually keep them as small as possible. Uh, but as you can see, the, the real-world problems are quite a lot of them, and they are tricky. So I'll just uh, give a quick overview. So like vendor hooks, for people who don't know, like they are just simple trace points. Uh, they are strategically placed in the generic kernel image, uh, like in Android, so that vendors can either completely override the function or extend it somehow uh, to fix a problem they have, whatever that problem might be. And if you ever try to remove these hooks, actually, you will you will run into issues. And like, uh, it's, it's mostly related to quality, really, not not about uh, like, uh, like. I mean, there can be some stability issue. We'll come into that like in a bit. But like, it's it's, it's a lot of them are about quality issues that you will get. Uh, I mean, these are some subjective ideas or like problems that you can run into, like related to UI, battery life, thermal. And you might lose access to some hardware, potentially, like you, you never know like what kind of extra features and like hardware proprietary being uh, in the SOC. Uh, but it's it's mostly a quality issue, really, that we are trying to address over here. But like, if you, if you are buying a device that's really like a few hundreds, like not a few hundreds, like almost a thousand, <laughs> you really care about that part and you don't want to sacrifice it at all. Uh, one of the major issues actually that uh, like and that I work quite a lot, so I have a bias towards it. Is, is the scheduler? Um, uh, it's tend to be changed quite a lot, and it's a very difficult problem. Like, how do you fix the scheduler for everyone? Uh, with the generic kernel image, like we just have one thing that's shipped for everyone, uh, and well, you want that to work for everyone as well, uh, but. People like run into all these UI related issues and like. Uh, if I want to summarize the problem that actually limited, uh, like uh, people like want to change it, there are a lot of features that are missing. They are not available. Uh, we hit a lot of bugs that needs to be fixed. Uh, and there is the tunability part of things, which is maybe a very kind of time bombed or like um, the tunability word, people like tend not to like it, but I'm not talking about scheduler tunability over here in a sense, like we don't want the debug FS to tune the behavior, but the system as a whole, like has some kind of like characteristics that you want to be able to control uh, to get a trade off for like performance or power, for instance. Uh, beside the, the scheduler, like uh, we live like the Android is a very brutal world where like we have an SOC, several SOCs like being produced every year that it's almost impossible to catch up, especially for drivers and other stuff. Eratas is one of the issues that uh, come quite a lot, like how do you handle them? Like uh, in a generic kernel image context, it might not be suitable for everyone or like the solution might not be mature enough to include it or like it might be temporary, like I don't know, like there can be lots of issues over there that require it. And with the big little like architecture specifically uh, and the way the DBFS work like in Android world, like you, you from user perspective, uh, like application developer perspective, uh, it's really very hard to program for them. <laughs> so like this kind of created a lot of divergence like in the user space and like each vendor like tried to end up with some kind of SDK to provide these kind of interfaces and hide all these problems from the user like, hey, do this, do that. And and we really lack a community in this regard, like how do we do it? And like we, we kind of need somehow, like I will come to this as well later, like kind of ownership, like this is should be our problem. It's not directly a kernel problem, but it is really a problem that, that forces these kind of uh, vendor hooks to be implemented at the end of the day, which connect to SDKs, which, you know, all these kind of inconsistency and fragmentation problems that we run into. Uh, so like what kind of like issues we see. Uh, so like from the scheduler perspective, like fair scheduler is really important. Otherwise, it will not get a functioning system. <laughs> but it's not really like a lot of people try to spend a lot of time fighting the, the fairness of, of 
of the scheduler because not all tasks in the system are equal, uh, like especially in a very interactive workload where uh, like for instance, like the most basic example is UI, like you're interactive. When you when you scroll, suddenly certain tasks really need to get a priority over other. But how do you do this dynamically in a very consistent way? And most importantly, really portable. So like you write the software and it just works for all hardware, for all topologies, as you know, like ARM topologies, like really for the Android is really like very, very diverse. You can have six littles, one mid, one big. You can have too many things and like, uh, Fairness becomes an issue generally when people have to to uh, to handle this kind of workloads, and this basically creeps up into some some vendor hooks to basically break this fairness in certain use cases and certain scenarios, so that that basically the right thing happens for the end user and they are happy. It's ugly, but it's happy. <laughs> uh, latency interface is actually one of the things that has been growing for years that we actually really want. Uh, and it's very important, like one part of the unfairness, like you want, like when there's a latency task, uh, fairness is not important over here. Latency is more, more important. Uh, I'm trying to identify more items that actually like needed, but uh, one of the issues as well, like with AES, like it's like it has a packing behavior, which is the opposite of the default scheduler behavior, which separates tasks. And like you want to break them around, like um, like how how do you handle this in different situations? So there is a prefer idle implementation in Android as well, which which is good, but like it's very power hungry. So like it's created problems, and this also leads to other problems, which vendor hooks fixed in vendor hooks. So you get kind of like this kind of feedback cycle into issues. Uh, there is a general like lack of mechanism. I think we had in the scheduler people who attend the scheduler real time conference for like a quality of service kind of framework. Like because not all tasks are equal. Like there is no way to basically like we don't have any framework to to help build like libraries and other things to say these tasks or these kind of things have this kind of properties. Please do it for me transparently. Like and it will just work. So so we don't have and like the example I gave with like packing, spreading, like latency. I'm sure there are more that needs to be unpacked, but that's actually type of the difficult task, like how do you unpack and analyze all these workloads to, to come up to these conclusions and distill them to few quality of service that the Linux kernel should understand. Uh, a lot, we do see a lot of inversions and start versions problems. Like, I mean, they are rare maybe like, but still not rare enough like to not affect the quality at the end of the day where like you, you end up with very bad use cases. Uh, CPU shares at some point, like, it becomes difficult to use generally and like you might actually become say like it's unusable at all at some point uh, at certain circumstances like it depends how you view the problem. Brooks execution has been growing for years. It's hopefully the ultimate solution like I am personally like keen into like like staging the problem into like something that makes it less worse to something that makes it even less worse and moving on but like it's quite a problem. Uh, and we, with DVFS, the way DVFS works in, um, uh, in in Android, and it should be in Linux, but like Intel do things differently, but like an ARM system, and the big little, you really see a new class of inversion, performance inversion. If you have a task that's running at a very low frequency, or in a little core, uh, and it's holding a lock, or, or like wait, doing some important work that somebody waiting for it, it will, it will hook up some latency sensitive tasks, and how do you deal with that? These issues, so like you really need to boost it, not just in priority. It needs to run on a bigger core or like somewhere at, uh, at a higher frequency. And th there was no concept before that, uh, like about these kind of issues. Uh, a lot of one of the issues that creep up a lot is that background tasks like end up stealing a lot of perf and power. Go ahead. Uh, we have a question. <clears throat> Uh, you, you have one point about um, pre, uh, locking and, uh, and a priority inheritance. There was another talk before about uh, the binder. The binder is heavily yeah. used, and it seems that the binder is heavily doing some lock of a lock. Some, uh, so have you ch uh, checked or study we how much actually. of this locking inheritance can be just fixed by removing them? completely from the user space i mean i mean you, you can you you can't really remove all this locking inheritance but maybe in some place you are using too much lock and you should move to some lockless behavior just to prevent this kind of inheritance 
Yeah, but the problems, like, there was one, I think, in OSPM, we discussed that, where Unity, like, they were saying yeah. one of their games, they had issues. Like, we cannot go and fix that, like, no, uh, applications uh, that you... Clearly, you will not fix all the things, but, I mean, if it's a real problem, a major problem for you, and from the, the, the figure that have been shown, you, cr you can decrease by, I think it was 200, it was from 200% 200, 200, uh, less, so maybe that could fix and and, and make your priority in inheritance simpler than what you need right now to fix that. Instead of trying to have a smarter priority in inheritance, yeah. you need to fix this in inheritance, but on the other side, maybe you also need to fix what's going on in user space to prevent such kind of circular or deep inheritance uh, uh, things. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, but like, I think the lesson that has been, it's it's really hard. And as I said, like, even if it is very few use cases that happens, it's still like will impact the overall quality and people will will, will perceive it. So um, if there is something simpler to be done, I'm really happy to do it. Like for me, my goal is like, if we can have something in, in the Android 15 timeframe, that would be amazing. But yeah, we'll... very ambitious. Okay, so moving on. So like uh, background task can steal a lot of performance and power and people like really like this is kind of like tricky to describe how this is being done. It's like you want to move some task away, which has impact implications with the load balancer. And we have some issues with current like as well, like uh, like mechanism. Uh, RT is quite tricky as well because you want energy awareness with RT. It by default it runs at max with UCLAM min. We like max frequency with UCLAM min, we fix that, but uh, uh, task placement is a big problem because you don't want to end up with a big query quite often. And with, if we have ever latency, like RT is latency sensitive, there is no inter-class uh, like operations. Bug fixes takes a lot of time. Uh, like, and even if you like want to go upstream, you, you're forced to do it in Tinderhook. So I'll have to skip a little bit to just to go because we're a bit short in time. So how can we break the deadlock? So I think the biggest basic message I want to deliver over here is like that we need to have some kind of paradigm shift in times like when we define something is going bad and start like giving the user space some kind of like, <laughs> like they need to get their brownie points for like, hey, I'm, I'm having a good pay for what? It's not just a hardware and like an OS problem where like, hey, you just look what I do, I'll fix it automatically for you. Although, like, if you really want to productize, you have no option. But we really need to start thinking more, like, how, how can we start helping applications write better programs that end up being portable and work everywhere? And that, that's really what's going to get rid of, like, a lot of these vendor hooks that's really required to make sure that things just work for these, for these workloads. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's not acceptable for a commercial product to, to have something that just basically have these small lapses, even if they are rare or small. So they are required, but as you can see, the complexity of these problems is quite high. Okay, um, I'm just kind of co confused by the last bullet. Isn't that kind of opposite of what you're asking? We don't have any special libraries like this for the Linux like desktop, do we? Yeah, but that's missing over there. That's not mean it's it's better over there. I don't think Linux programming generally is very easy. Yeah. So, so like people want to write program for Linux, I think they struggle. Like at least then in my wouldn't experience, that mean if you're trying to give user space more control and more libraries, then we'll have to do that for the desktop too. I don't think it's a different problem. So I mean you can choose what you want to do, but like from my experience, like people come from Mac OS, like 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 Apple, like for instance, or like even on Windows, they, they find a lot of flexibility of being able to do things and like tell them and they come in Linux and sometimes I speak with them. It's like, hey, why is it not the same like this? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, like for instance, like Apple have a very nice, like something called the Grand Central Dispatcher for to, to make multi-threaded multi -threaded programming a lot easier in Linux, uh, on, on Big Little and all these kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, these kind of things are, will help quite a lot. How they connect to the OS and this kind of things is a different issue. And then I, mean, I agree with your point in general, we should you know, there's need to give user space more control, yeah. But at the same time, where do we draw the line to, right? For example, in terms of the big little DVFS inversion, Matthew Denoy, I think, was talking about packing tasks in a different way. I would think that might help in this situation where you bring the tasks into big, tiny tasks instead of running it on little. So then if that ends up helping, then you don't need to manage it from user space. So how do you know 
Yeah, in my opinion, like it's it's a continuous effort. Yeah. Sorry.